Kitavali prayers, which gives the same siddhantas as the scriptures, but in simple Bengali language, and in the first person, the I mode, so that the reader, us, we conditioned souls can relate to our own fallen position, understand uh, our present condition, and at the same time, understand how to become free from it by praying in ways that he expresses on our behalf. So I don't want to take up more time because I'm sure other devotees would like to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Now in Krishna Pramachari we will speak Om Agyana Timiranda Sagananjana Salakaya Chachurun Miritam Jena Sasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Satchidananda Namine Gaura Sakti Sarupaya Rupanuga Badayate Manchakal Patarupascha Kripasindhu Bhayevacha Patitananga Pavanit Bho Vasnabhebho Namo Namaha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. First of all, I convey my humble Dandavat Pranam to the feet of Guru Maharaj. After that, all Vaishnavas who assembled here to hear the glory of Sri Bhakti Vinod Thakur and Sri Lakadhar Pandit Goswami. As before, we have heard from Pujjabha Bhaisar Prabhu and Pujjabha Samrani Didi. They explained so many things about Bhakti Vinod Chakur, which we have heard from my Guru Dev, I try to explain. If there is any mistake, please excuse me. Sri Bhakti Vinod Chakur <coughs> explained in his Jeva Dharma from top to bottom of sadhan, how one devotee can progress in sadhan life. He explained everything in Jeva Dharma. If anyone wants to progress in Krishna consciousness, he has to go, he has to go through Jaiva Dharma. Then easily he can enter in realm of Krishna. At first he explained in Jaiva Dharma, first chapter, the eternal salu, the constitutional form of Jiva. Jiva is the eternal servant of Supreme God, but he forget due to Maya that he is servant of Krishna. That's why I give an example. Water, if we, water come in contracts of too cold, it becomes ice. The religion of water is liquency, but borok, that means ice, is not liquid, it's too hard. I say, same way. The religion of Jeev is to service of God, but he forget he thought that I am enjoyer of this material world. And the sarup of Jeev he explained in Jaiva Dharma. The origin of Jeev comes from Baladev Prabhu, Sankarsan and Kartalok Sai Vishnu. Who came from Baladev Prabhu? They are eternal associates of Supreme Personality God and Krishna in Braj. They are always engaged in Krishna service. They have no time to care that there is an immaterial world and Jeev is suffering there quite a lot. And second kind of Jeev, they came from Sankarsan. They are also eternal associates of Inuvala Vaikuntha. That means associates of Narayan, Vaman, Nishimha, Ramchandra, etc., etc. They also engage so much, they have no time to care about material world that Jeev is suffered, Jeeves are suffering here. Both of them are called associates. The eternal associates of Braj and eternal associates of Vaikuntha. And third kind of Jeev came from Karnak Sai Vishnu. Some of them 
they went according to their position. Some went Vaikuntha, some Ajodha, some Dalaka, some Mathura, some Braj. And he who wants to enjoy this material world, they entangled in Maya. And Maya binds them with three kinds of chains. One is called mode of ignorance, mode of passion, and mode of goodness. And he is thinking, I am injured, and this suffering coming here. Then Sri Bhakti Thakur is explaining how Jeev can attain Krishna service. Sri Bhakti Thakur gives his solution. If they take shelter of Bonafide Gurudev and under guidance of Vaishnava and Bonafide Gurudev, they can serve Krishna. And Prahlad Maharaj explained the same thing that Guru Sushru Saya Bhakta Sarvala Bhakta Nenacha. Sangina Sadhu Bhakta Namishra Radha Nenacha. We have to respect Vaishnava. Under guidance of Vaishnava, we have to take shelter of Bonafide Gurudev. And we have to offer everything, our heart and soul. Buddha Vala explained that I want only your heart. That means we have to offer everything and we have to do everything for his pleasure. If we do everything for pleasure of Guru, uh, Bonafide Gurudev, then we can do everything for pleasure of Krishna, Sri Krishna Chandra. And so Bhakti Thakur explained at last, who is Gauriya Sadha? That means who came in line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. After his perfection, his soul divided into two. By one he will serve Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Navadhi Dham. By another he will serve Vajanandam Samsundar in Braj. This main teachings in Dasamur Siksha, that means ten, ten fundamental instructions. All instruction Bhakti Thakur put in one slope. Amnaya praha tattam harimya paramam sarva shakti rasabdhim tad bhinnam sanscha jivan prakiti kavalitam tad bhinnam bhava bheda bheda prakasam sakalopi sadhanam suddha bhaktim saddham tad pratim pujyasati jananga urachan rasayansa. One praman and nine prameya. Amnaya means that which we, which we get from Guru Parampara. There is so many things in Vedas and Upanishads. None can go easily, in, none can enter in Vedas through very easily. So we have to go through Guru Parampara. Which Guru Parampara, which advice adopted by our Guru Parampara we have respect them, which is called Amnaya. What are my church? That what are my proof? There are nine things he proves. What Tattam Harimya Paramam? Krishna is supreme theory. Hari is supreme theory. Who is this Hari? Srimad Bhagavat, the Chakra Thakur Chal, Srimad Bhagavatam Pramanam Amalam. So in Bhagavatam, Ete chang sakala pumsa krishna stu bhagavan sayam. Supreme person of Godhead is saying bhagavan, is hari. Hari hi paramatattam and sarva sakti mi rasabdhim. He is omnipotent and rasabdhim ocean of ras. Krishna is ocean of ras. I hope that a devotee know all these things that Krishna was an Abhras because you can see that one very little book Krishna was an Abhras in English our book chapel compiled by the Gurudev and it's translated to French language also so no need to explain this point Rasabdhin that there is five prominent Ras and seven secondary Ras Santa, Dasa, Hasa Santa Dasa Sakha Vatsala Madhur, these five are prominent, and Hatsa, Karun, Rodra, Bhayana, Bir, Vivatsa. These seven are secondary ras. Krishna is person of all ras. 
Srimad Bhagavatam explain it one in one slope. Mallana Masaninang Narodas Nirans Manamurtiman in this slope. So Hari Param Tatam Sarvasakti Rasadhi Tad Bhinnang Sang Sangscha Prakitika Valitan. Jeep is part and particle. This jeep is two types. One is liberated soul, another is conditioned soul. And they are simultaneously different and non-different from God. A Vedavada Prakasam means not only for Jeev, that means potency and Shaktiman, that Almighty, they are simultaneously different and non-different. Sakalvati Sadhanam Hares Suddha Bhakti. What is Sadhan? Sadhan means by which means we can attain service of Krishna, it is called Suddha Bhakti. That means pure devotion. Prabhupada Chila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur explain it in Sri Chaitanya Chaitamitam commentary. Suddha Bhakti means, pure devotee means, pure devotion means, spontaneous devotion. So, Sadhanam Suddha Bhakti. There is two types of devotion, regulative devotion and continuous devotion. Spontaneous devotion. Krishna may be pleased by regulative devotion, but none can control Krishna by regulative devotion. So, Sri Prabhupada, Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarati Rasan Thakur explained that pure devotion means Raganuga Bhakti. Sadhanam Sutta Bhakti. And Sadha, what is the destination? Tat Priti Vepatthu Bodhisati. Tat Priti. Tat means in this world there is three things, two things. One is called Tat Padartha and Tan Padartha. Sri Guru explained day for yesterday. Tat means Krishna. That means the pleasure of Krishna is our supreme goal. Tat Priti. Then Sri Guru explained so many things about his pleasure, Krishna's pleasure. It must be Prince Krishna and it will be very test testable for Krishna. Like us, Guru Dev give an example that Mother Jasoda twisting Krishna's ears. And Krishna wants to take her breath, take her breast. But Mother Jasoda shall sit down here. By one hand, he take Krishna and by force he put back to Krishna in, on the floor. Krishna began to eat. Began being supreme personality Godhead, he could not do anything because due to love of Mother Jasoda. Krishna is weeping here. In another hand, Chanur and Mustik, Krishna wrestling with them, and Krishna is very happy and testing heroism. Why it is not pure devotion? Why not all activity of Mother Jasoda or welfare of Krishna? Krishna is weeping here, big here, but Jasoda's inner mood is to please Krishna. <coughs> How Krishna will be very good boy in future? Jasoda is ever well of Krishna, but Chanur Mustik, they fight to resurrect Krishna, but the inner mood, how to smash Krishna? So it is not bhakti. So, Sad Priti, here in during wrestling with Chanur and Mustik, Krishna became very happy and testing heroism. Here it is not bhakti. Another hand, the Jasuda may weep, weep to Krishna, yet it is Uttama Bhakti. The Sadham Tat Pritim, Epadasadi Janan Gauracharya Sansa, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught all this theory for whole world. Sri Bhakti Vila Thakur merciful, mercifully taken all these things and make a garland in one slope. This is the best contribution of Sri Bhakti Vila Thakur. And another thing, the contribution of Sri Bhakti Vila Thakur, he discovered Snavadip Dham. And another, he discovered Prabhupada Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasri Vasam Thakur. If Bhakti Vila Thakur not come in that time, None can know that where is Navadip Dham? What is the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? 
trying to help of taking the help of Sila Jagannath Swami Maharaj and taking a map, old map from London National Library and he proves that this is the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahasabhu and he discovered and, of, and present the whole world Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Chakur. Today you are seeing that a very big preaching is going on. Who is the origin of this preaching theory? Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Chakur. Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Chakur present Sri Bhakti Prabhupada in this world. And he preached Nam Hatra. That people can assemble somewhere, time to time, and they can discuss so many things about devotee, devotion, and God. So Bhakti Thakur taught all these things for devotee. So he has so many things, and he composed so many things in his literature. In Chaitanya Chaitamritam, in his commentary, Amit Prabhavasa, he told so many things. Sri so, Chaitanya Sri Chaitanya Chaitam Grantha is so deep without commentary of Sila Bhaktivana Thakur or Sila commentary of Sila Prabhupada, none can enter in Chaitanya Chaitamritam. Sila so, Bhaktivana Thakur had done so many things, just like our six Goswamis. Sila Rupa Goswami, Sila Sanatana Goswami, Sila Rabunadas Goswami, Sila Jeeva Goswami, Sila Gopalar Gopal Bhatta Goswami, Sila Rabunadas Bhatta Goswami. He did the same thing. So all Gaudiya Vaishnav give him charge of that Saptam Goswami, that means seventh Goswami. As we after sixth Goswami, no one get this title, that seventh Goswami. And after that, up to date, no one is eighth Goswami. Gaudiya was not given the title. So, another activity and teaching of Sri Bhakti Chakur, we shall hear from another verse now. And everybody is want to hear us <coughs> about Bhakti Chakur and Galahar Pandit from Sri Lord Rasta Sri Guru Dev. And that thing, that Sri Bhakti Chakur called Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Satchidananda Ramine. Gaura Shakti Sarupaya Rupanuga Varayate. How we did so many things? Simultaneously, his eternal survivors, eternal associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and same time, eternal associates of Divine Kapu. Namo Bhakti Vinodaya, who gives pleasure to Divine Kapu by devotion, so he is Bhakti Vinod. Satchidananda Namine, and he is like transcendental, Gaura Shakti Sarupaya, he is, who is Gaura Shakti, who is potency of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Gadadhar Pandit. He is manifestation of Gadadhar Pandit. So Gaura Shakti Sarupaya, Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Satchidananda Namine, Gaura Shakti Sarupaya, Rupanuga Varayate. Rupanuga Varayate means, Varaya means Shrestha, he is best among Rupanuga Vaishnav at his time. Rupanuga means the eternal associates of Krishna, it is they call Ragadmik. Iste Sarasiki Rago Parama Vishtata Bhave Tanmuya Bhave Dhakti Sattva Ragadmik Odita. With eternal associates, they have eternally affection for Krishna, they call Ragadmik. And who hearing activity of ragatmik jan who have agreed to adopt these things that friends are playing with Krishna, they are serving with Krishna, Madhav Jasoda, Nanda Baba, Upananda Vinanda, they are serving Krishna, Gopis are serving Krishna. If anybody have agreed, hearing all these pastimes and want to serve the same mood, they are, follow, they are following how to present. Proceed this <coughs> theory, they call Raga Nuga. That Ragatmika Manusita Jasa Raga Nuga Chate, who is following Ragatmik Jan, they call Raga Nuga. 
and Bhakti Thakur is called Rupanga Varayate. Among our six Goswamis, Rupa Sami is best. So Rupa Sami, if act in two form, one is Sadha form, another is Siddha form. Seva Sadhaka Rupena Siddha Rupena Chattrahi, Tabhava Lipsunakarja Prajaloka Nusarata is performing all devotional activities as a Rupa Sami and is serving divine couple as a Rupa Manjari. So who follow Rupa Sami in externally and internally? Both. They are called Rupa Nuga. They are following Rupa Sami's all theory. By Sadhak Sari and other by Siddha Sari. So among of them, Silo, Bhakti Thakur is based in his times. So, Rupa Anuga Varayate. So, at first Sagatvik, after that, who follow Sagatvik, they are Rupa Anuga. Among Rupa Anuga, who is followers of Silo Rupa Sami, internally and externally, they are called Rupa Anuga. All, all Rupa Anuga are Raga Anuga, but all Raga Anuga is not Rupa Anuga. So after that, Srila Gurudev asking me to stop here. Everybody is facing towards Gurudev Rota space, so I don't want to take much time. All of you, Hare Krishna. Pancha Kalvata Rupa Chattipa Sindhu Bhai Vata Pantanam Bhavane Kho Vata Kho He felt a lot of pain in his heart 
and he took the responsibility to again bring about the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in such a way to all the people so that they should understand that actually that there is nothing beyond than the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His teachings are so pure and they are full of love and that's what everyone is looking for. So very nicely, one after another, he started printing and publishing the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu which were uh, given the form of books by Sikh Goswamis and other Acharyas like Chaitanya Chaitamrita, Bhakti Samit Sindhu and other literatures and he himself also compiled very new books based on the same philosophy but presented in such a way so that people at that time could understood, could understand and Navin Prabhuji very nicely explained about Jaiva Dharma. There are so many other books, teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and other things. So in those books, he presented the philosophy in such a sweet and uh, comprehensive language that when people they read these books, they started understanding that actually this philosophy is the best and there is no other uh, thing which could be taken as an alternative and it's actually the fault of these people who are not able to understand and they are uh, spoiling the image. And not only this, his own life, he practiced those teachings. It wasn't just coming to tell people, but he followed those teachings. As we know, he's eternal associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So these things are present in him, but still he acted as a conditioned soul in whole of his life he followed the four ashrams very nicely, giving examples that how, being in this world, we can still carry out our material duties and we can achieve our spiritual goals. And he discovered the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and thus we know him as the Saptam Goswami or the seventh Goswami in our line. The many nice stories how he uh, preached the Namgatta program in Odisha, Bengal and all those areas and started inspiring people to come together as we are doing now that they can come together and discuss the teachings of Mahaprabhu and thus can benefit their lives and though it's Kali Yuga and we are all suffering with so many miseries and troubles and always the mind is in tension but by following these teachings of Mahaprabhu we can keep ourselves always peaceful and happy and thus not only this we can also achieve the highest goal a living entity can achieve and that is love of Godhead there's nothing beyond that we also know once Srila Bhaktinur Thakur was taken to heaven and that was in regard to when all the demigods in the heaven they were discussing on the verse of Bhagavad Gita Api Chetso Dura Charo Bhajate Mahamana Nivag so they could not understand that how Krishna is saying that even if you see faults in my devotee, do not criticize him. Because by the date of your devotion, my bhakti, very soon he will become purified. So they were not able to understand that what is the essence of this verse. So when they were very much confused and they were bewildered, so they were thinking what to do and then uh, uh, they were told, I think, uh, so they, they were told that now if they go to this earth, then Shilpakti Thakur is present and he knows the real essence of this verse and because he's the pure devotee and he's eternal associate. So they all came, yeah, so they, then he was sleeping one night and during his sleep they took Shri Bhaktur Thakur in the heaven and he was there for about two days and very nicely he reconciled the whole verse and all the demigods were so happy to hear that and then he came back. So he preached not just in this uh, earth planet but he preached all over the heaven and that is also said in one of the prayers, Mahaprabhu Ragana Sabapatita Pavan, Brahmanda Tarita Shakti Dhare Jani Jani that the associate of Mahaprabhu, all the associates are so powerful that just by their one hand they can deliver the whole world. 
and Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was also capable. But mercifully, they always keep something for other devotees to come and do some service for Mahaprabhu. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur very uh, nicely did all these things and we can speak endlessly on this and I am too small and not knowing so much so we will request the Gurudev to speak on uh, his uh, wonderful life so that we can all benefit and learn. But I humbly pray at the Lotus Feet of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur that he can always bestow upon his upon us his godless mercy that we can understand his teachings and thus dedicate our lives with all this sincerity to follow the teachings of Mahaprabhu and please Srila Guru Maharaj so that we can perfect our lives. On Before speaking, I'd like to offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of my divine Diksha Guru, Srila Gauravan Maharaj. Also, I'd like to offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of my Shiksha Guru, Srila Bhakti Dantanoya Maharaj, and also unto the lotus feet of my Param Guru, Srila A.C. Bhakti Dantanoya Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada. So, devotees have been speaking very nicely and um, covering many, many topics regarding Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So, I would like to briefly just give a bit of a biographical sketch of the life of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Some years back I um, read a book which was put out by a devotee Sriman Rupa Vilas, the Seven Goswami. So what I can recall from that, then I'll speak. And if there are whatever mistakes I make, please correct me so I don't send anybody astray. So Srila Bhakti no Thakur, he appeared in a village called Uliagram. Um, as Kedanath Dat, it's explained that his parents, both mother and father, they came from very aristocratic stock and from a very early age he was always very interested in um, understanding the nature of the Lord, universe, spiritual subject matter and he would always inquire whether it be to, um, he, he explains that in his autobiography that there was one Chokidam, kind of a watchman who um, was a Ram Bhakta in his early days, he was a bit of a dacoit, but he was always chanting Ram. So, Srila Bhakti Kedanath would go and speak with him, hear stories of Lord Ramachandra, even if he came in contact with Mohammedan Fakir, um, Mohammedan holy man, he would also go, and he was very inquisitive to know. So, in his youth, he was well educated. His parents sent him to a school in Krishna Nagar, where they had the um, children of the influential and affluential Bengali families. And he excelled in school, but due to sickness, he had to go back to his village. And after some time, he was sent to Calcutta, where he went to college. And it's explained that at that time also he excelled, but also he became um, open to Christian theology because it was some type of Christian school that he was studying at in Calcutta. And this inner quest to understand the absolute truth that took shape in the form of um, reading um, Christian theology. And about the same time he came in contact with um, many intellectual people in Calcutta both amongst the British Raj and also amongst the Bengali intelligentsia. Um, specifically, there's a family called the Tagore family. One of the Tagores, I think his name is Rabindranath Tagore. Tagore, he was um, a Nobel 
prize winner. And one of the relatives was a Narendranath Tagore, who was a very close friend of Bhatibhno Tagore. So, um, in Bhatibhno Tagore's autobiography, he explained that they were very, very close friends. But the Tagore family, they followed a particular philosophy called Brahmoism. Um, and they tried to convince Kedanath, but Kedanath said that he was not so inclined towards this Brahmoism because he, at that time, was more inclined to the teachings of Jesus Christ because they were personal in nature, whereas Brahmoism was impersonalism. It was kind of, um, from what I can recollect, some a kitri of taking the Upanishads and different parts of the Vedas, the impersonalistic aspects, and dabbing that with a bit of Christianity, and they came up with um, Brahmanism. So, um, it was explained that during that time, the British, they, in their way to dominate India, their policy was that um, whatever aspects of Indian culture, specifically um, the scriptures, um, religious rituals, that they would condemn and, and just put down as being pretty much hodgepodge. So, and also the young um, intellectual <coughs> Indians that would come up in the system, they would train them to be English in mentality, even though physically they were Indian. So under such situation, then the, especially the Bengali um, intellectuals, they took to this Brahmanism, and it became very, very prevalent. But um, during this time, Kedanath, that he was, he was not really um, so much attracted to this. So, it's explained that he had to leave Calcutta because um, I think there was some sickness in the family or some kind of um, devastation in his village. And he had to um, take up um, taking care of his family, his mother. By this time he was a married man. So he had different jobs and it explains how he had so many different jobs um, throughout his life. And at one point he came in contact with um, Vaishnav Sadhus and he got the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So he explains that reading Chaitanya Charitamrita then immediately he could appreciate the sublime teachings and pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And at one point he said that in reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Ba very quickly arose in him. So after coming in contact with Vaishnav scriptures, he would um, he would always search out um, sadhus and he became more and more absorbed in the Vaishnav teachings. So we can see that Though Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he's an eternal associate of the Lord, but the Lord, he used him in a particular way that, as has been mentioned earlier, that it is through him that the worldwide preaching um, has come about. So he being the first Acharya in this way, he was educated in the Western system, and he had a very broad um, way of dealing with different religions. He was, his approach was um, very non-sectarian. And this was so much appreciated by people of, the, um, of his time that when there were disputes between the caste Hindus and those following Brahmanism or what have you, then they would call up upon Kedanath Dat to try and resolve the situation. Because everybody appreciated that he was a very learned, open and broad-minded person. Um, this would sometimes backfire in the sense that in presenting the Vaishnav conclusion, then sometimes both parties would get annoyed with him because he would not side with either but present the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, as has been explained also, um, after some time he resided in Jagannapuri and he held the post of um, what, deputy. Deputy Magistrate, which was the um, highest 
post that could be held by an indigenous um, citizen at the time. And he would um, take care of, um, he would oversee the worship of Lord Jagannath in the temple. And he explains that he experienced great bliss going daily to the temple of Lord Jagannath, taking darshan. And also he would have um, Bhagavad discourses, Bhagavad Pravachan, um, in a particular part of the um, Jagannath temple. So one pastime that comes to mind is um, having these discourses, there was, he would have the different Vaishnavas would come and they would sit down and discuss. And in another part, um, there would be um, people discussing um, philosophy from an impersonal point of view. So I think it was in the Valuable Gardens that the discussions would go on. And one elderly Vaishnava of Babaji, he was not so much in favor of the devotees going to sit and speak with um, Kedanath Da, because he's saying that he was not wearing um, neck beads, um, and he was not externally showing the symptoms of a Vaishnav. And he kind of started a bit of a, a boycott of um, the Katan. But I can't remember exactly, but one night in a dream, um, he, the person, this devotee, he was actually a very exalted person. He became sick, and in a dream, um, he was chastised for his treating Kedna that like this. So when he got up in the morning, immediately he ran over to where Bhakti no Thakur was staying and paid, he begged forgiveness. And Bhakti no Thakur, he replied that, um, please forgive me, what is my fault for not wearing Kanti Mala? That Lord Mahaprabhu has not sent my guru to me yet. So because of this, I'm not wearing it because the tradition, um, from what I can understand, is that, um, that the guru will give the neck beads. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains that, that this um, elderly Babaji then became very affectionate to Bhaktivinoda Thakur and would give him shelter. So in Jagannath Puri, he would associate with um, so many devotees. Um, then after that, he was posted to different places, but as been explained, he also um, was posted near Navadweep, and I believe um, to the close to the end of his um, manifest pastimes, then he stayed in a, um, a place which is in Jagannath Puri, um, near the Haridas Thakur Samadhi, where he wound up his lila. So I cannot remember much more. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. say two uh, tendencies in as, in as far as misrepresentation of the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The one tendency is Sajiism, to take cheaply the teachings of Mahaprabhu. Uh, and there are so many different sects of Sahajism. At the time of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, 
there were 13 prominent sects of Sahajism. And they also make use of the literature of the Goswamis, especially Chaitanya Charitamrit and Udral Nilmani and other books. And <clears throat> they will quote these books and try to establish that uh, they can, in various ways, imitate the uh, mood of the Lord's eternal associates in an unauthorized way. And the other tendency is to uh, completely neglect the mood of spontaneous devotion following in the, in the mood of the residents of Braj and to reduce the teachings of Mahaprabhu simply to uh, ru uh, rules and regulations, the path of Vaidhi Marg. So, <clears throat> both of these tendencies uh, will not allow us to actually capture the true essence of what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. And we find both in the personality of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, in his behavior, in his, uh, the example that he set, and especially in his uh, voluminous writings, that he established the true conclusions of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to dispel and eradicate both of these tendencies. Uh, if we simply examine the number of books written by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, it is astonishing. He wrote over 100 books, and he wrote in six different languages. He wrote in Sanskrit, Bengali, Hindi, English, Urdu, and Oriya. So this is a, an extraordinary feat. And in, in some years, he wrote as many as six different books, some of them very large books. Uh, so it is quite extraordinary. And in those books, he presented many uh, revolutionary concepts. Uh, he took the essence of the teachings of the six Goswamis and he presented them in a very extraordinary <coughs> manner. Uh, some of these things have already been described. Uh, Shiva, uh, Naveen Prabhu gave a very nice uh, description of Jaya Dharma. <coughs> so, uh, and also of uh, Das Mulam, which is one of the most prominent concepts that we find throughout the uh, books of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. There is one book, Bhagavad Arka Marichi Mala, in which he, the whole book is discussing this concept of Das Mula very elaborately. I won't uh, describe it again because it's already been nicely described. Um, I just wanted to add one thing, that this Das Mula, it is also further divided into the topics of Sambandha, Abhideya, and Prayojan. So, of the nine pramayas, or the nine uh, fundamental principles which are established by the Praman, or by the Shastra, the first seven fall under the category of Sambandha Tattva, understanding one's relationship with the Lord. Uh, so, understanding different aspects of the Lord his energies and the living entities and the interrelationship between all of these all come under the category of Sambandha Gyan. So seven of these nine Pramayas fall under that. Then the next one is Abhideya Tattva. So Abhideya Tattva refers to that process by which we can attain the goal of life. So this refers to the path of bhakti. And it refers specifically to bhakti beginning from 
uh, or in the stage of sadhana, beginning from Krata up to the stage of Asakti. And Prayojan Tattva, which is the ninth principle, refers to Sadhya, the, the goal, or the, the goal to be obtained by Bhakti. So this is including both Bhav and Prem. So, in this book, he has described all these things, and I think it's at the very end of the book, he says that uh, I, I, I must explain how the vision of this book came to me. He said, in one sense, I feel ashamed to admit it, because uh, if I admit it, then some persons will think that I am proud. And yet, on the other hand, if I don't admit it, then I will not be giving credit to the uh, person from whom this revelation came. So he says that uh, the, the revelation of this book came to him in a dream from Surat Damanar Goswami. And he revealed to him how to summarize the entire Srimad Bhagavatam. This Bhagavad Arkamarichimala consists of approximately 300 shlokas. <coughs> so they're all from Srimad Bhagavatam. So he uh, explained to him, explained to Bhakti Thakur how to summarize the entire Bhagavatam into these 300 shlokas and according to the divisions of Sambandha, Abhideya, and Parayojan, and then also according to the explanation of Dasmula. So, uh, by this and so many incidents of the life of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, we get some insight into what kind of a person he was. He was not an ordinary person at all. He was an eternal associate of the Lord. Also in Bhavataranga, in the final portion of the book, he explains his eternal swarup as Kamala Manjuri. And he gives a very elaborate description there of uh, his form and the services that he performs there. So, uh, by doing this, he has both indicated his, uh, what his actual position is, and he is also teaching us what is the, uh, what is the process for us to advance. So, in all the books that he has written, he has given a very systematic pres uh, presentation of the philosophy of Lord Chaitanya, beginning from basic concepts, like Naveen Prabhu was describing in the, in the beginning of Jaiva Dharma. He was explaining what is the actual surup of the Jeev, and uh, how the Jeev should be uh, first established he is also discussed in many of his books, uh, Varnashram Dharma, uh, as a platform to uh, enter into bhakti. And then he describes bhakti beginning from Shraddha and described elaborately what is Vaidhi Bhakti, what is Raghunuga Bhakti. And especially in uh, Jaiva Dharma, he has explained all the teachings, or the essence of all the teachings of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and Ujjwal Nilmani. From chapters, approximately chapter 19 onwards, the last 20 or so chapters of the book, uh, he has given all the essential teachings of these two books of Srila Rupa Goswami uh, through the form of uh, this uh, wonderful story, and as Srila Gurudev has explained many times, it's not, we shouldn't take it as just some novel. It is uh, such an extraordinary book, it is uh, the only book that we can compare it with is Riyad Bhagavat Amrit in its style, because it is uh, telling a story, but again, not as an ordinary novel, but as uh, 
a series of exchanges between different Vaishnavas and teaching all the sadhanta through the exchanges that take place uh, through those Vaishnavas. Uh, so, in this way, he has established all the conclusions of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He has eradicated the various uh, Sahajya groups and also, but at the same time, established very strongly what is our actual process. Uh, nowadays, we find that some persons, they say that we should not even mention the word Raganuga. And we should not uh, discuss about what is Bhava Bhakti, what is Prema Bhakti, and what is uh, the mood of the residents of Braj. We should not discuss Tenth Kanto Shumat Bhagavatam. Uh, so, these, some of these ideas are being presented nowadays. But I think that persons that are presenting such ideas, that they must have never read any of the books of Srila Bhakti Nath Thakur. Because if anyone studies any one of his books, then they have to see that all of these conclusions are in his books. Beginning from the basic level up to the topmost level. So he has uh, actually taught through the method how he has presented his books, how we are meant to follow. Uh, first by understanding all of the siddhanta regarding sambandha gyan, then how to practice bhakti, what is the eligibility for vaidhi bhakti, what is the eligibility for raganuga bhakti, how to practice these things. And in uh, so many of his books, such as uh, Bhajan Rahasya, and in many of his song books also, he has taught in a very uh, practical and concrete way how to practice bhajan in order that we can obtain uh, this goal which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. So we are greatly indebted uh, to Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur for giving us all these books, for uh, planting the seed uh, by which the mission of, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could be spread throughout the world. Uh, if it was not for uh, His mercy, we would not be all gathered here right now uh, glorifying Him and receiving tremendous uh, inspiration from his very dear follower, uh, our Gurudev, Srila Bhaktivedanta uh, Narayan Maharaj. So, uh, I will stop here. Thank you. He's saying that in Bhaktivedanta's youth, he wrote a number of different articles and books like in the form of English poetry. So he's asking how Gauri Vaishnavas regard these sort of articles and books of Shubhati Nath Thakur. Why he wrote? Yes, <laughs> but um, Srila Bhakti Nath Thakur, uh, though he was an eternal associate of the Lord in his youth, uh, he appeared as if he was, uh, he was not exhibiting his uh, characteristic as a Vaishnava. He was uh, of course, very religious-minded, very philosophically-minded. He studied many different scriptures, and but it, it at least appeared externally that he had not embraced fully the path of Vaishnavism or Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Uh, so we take this as a pastime of the Lord 
in order to fulfill a, a certain purpose, uh, as was explained uh, by some of the other devotees. The, the particular social climate at the time, the, the British were in charge of India, and they were very strongly preaching against Vedic knowledge, against all the Vedic scriptures, and indoctrinating the youth into uh, either Christian concepts or just materialistic concepts. So, and simultaneously, uh, the Gaudiya Vaishnavism was not in very high regard at the time because of so many Sahajya practices. So, Srila uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, by uh, being, he was highly respected for his, that he was an intellectual, he was a very responsible, uh, had a very responsible post in society. Uh, so because of his, his external appearance, uh, it was easy for people to respect him. So that when he fully manifested his uh, nature as an unalloyed uh, associate of the Lord and a staunch advocate of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, then he was so influential, so many persons could accept because uh, it wasn't that he, because of his position in society as a, as a magistrate, as an intellectual, as a broad thinker. So, as far as I understand, the writings he did in his youth were in that mood. They were a part of his lila in order to set a certain platform from which people would be able to accept him when he fully adopted the uh, line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Vishtaya Putri Krishna Bhakti Chakyan Kesha Vaitinami Ati Matta Charitaya Swashitanam Sapalini Jiva Dukhe Sadataya Nam Sayinu Pradaya Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Vishtaya Putri Krishna Bhakti Chakyan Sarasvati Vinami Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Sakhidanam Naram Gokshakti Sarupaya Rupam Gurai He had heard so many things. About two hours he was hearing. And the <coughs> devotees are coming so much in so many uh, ways. His lives, his teaching, his writings, his mood of preaching, everything has been taught. But yet, everything has not been told. Brahma can have told, tells with four half mouths, how he can do all these things. Especially he was transcendental, and we are not transcendental. So how we can touch his glory? A transcendental person can touch the glory of transcendental. But we have heard some from our Gurudev, from other Vaishnavas, and Sarthi, from other books which are attentive. So, all I have told that he was Satsang Goswami. After Sarva Goswami, up to Bhakti Thakur, Anyone has not take, taken this upana of Shaktam Goswami. Only the latter persons and devotees saw the glorious activities of Sri Bhaktivinoda Thakur and they gave this upana title of Shaktam Goswami. If Bhakti was, but Bhakti not, Thakur was not there at that time, I think the, all the teachings and pure Gaudiya Vaishnavism 
has gone to ocean or ever. <coughs> he enlightened again all these things. It was like a uh, darkness period for Gaudiya Vaishnavas. At that time, anyone like Sahaji I used to give Siddha Siddha process, Siddha Pranali. They call they used to call it Siddha Pranali. And Siddha Deha to all. They don't know even they if those persons not devoted. That don't don't knew any Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy, no sadhacha, nothing, and they used to go to their guru, like Sahaji Babaji, and he used to give them this Siddha Deha and Siddha Pranali. They have a mis misconception of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teachings. That to be with a, uh, a wife of another person and to go to Vrindavan and what and to be with her and making children and this is Gaudiya Bhadi. Like this. That you are gopi. This is Siddha Siddha Deha. Oh, come on, come on. I am giving you Siddha, Deha and Siddha Pranali. <coughs> to whom? He is not knowing anything, every city of <coughs> any teaching, Chap Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he knows that I am this body. <coughs> he does not know that. I am so, I am the part and parcel and servant of Krishna eternally. He knows nothing. Even he don't know that after pool going to after passing, I don't know how to clean ever this nothing. But they were given at that time. Siddha Deha and Siddha Pranali. That you are goopy. What is goopy? They used to think I love her and love beloved. In this world, like this. So they, they think that collect any lady and be with him and enjoy and this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu philosophy, this prayer. At the time of death of any person, taking some money and they used to do Kirtan Hare Krishna Hare Krishna and fall in the what? That dead body. Dead body. And having some boys, some rupees for that. Understand what I am telling? What I do? If anyone was dead and he is a rich person, he told that collect some Vaishnav. And he went to this Vaishnav Jati, Vaishnav, and told that I will give you some money. And so joined our this procession of dead body. And he used to do Krishna. Say so they used to do Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare Krishna.
don't you to come in this place, go to this notion. So, what can you talk about the first person? He introduced the Chaitanya, philosophy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in learned society. And then, all new this thing. Then, what is Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy? What was the philosophy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? What is really transcendental love and fame after that? So, he is Satsam Goswami, like Bhagiras who brought Ganges in India. So he brought Bhakti Ganga in this world. And again all began to spot and inspire in this code Yavashna. If there was no Bhakti no Thakur, we have not joined this mission. Never. If Swamiji was not here, but Swamiji was not gone to Siddha Bhakti Veda, Siddhan Saraswati Thakur, and Siddhansar certainly not coming from Bhakti Vinodha then where you were. So it is all coming from Siddha Bhakti Vinodha He preached the doctrines were quite pure. Some say that he has not taken the from Jagannath Asurvaj Maharaj. And he has not taken Baba Jibesh from anyone. He took himself Baba Jibesh. And Siddha Bhakti Vinod Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati also do not take, do not do, uh, sannyas from anyone. So they are not made of bona fide Chaitanya Mahaprabhu line. They told, tell it, uh, lacking of intelligence and ignorance. They don't know what is Bhagavad Parampara, Guru Parampara and all these things. That is why they are. Bhakti Vinod Thakur has given a very good line as Lord Prabhu told and all others told. In Jaiva Dharma, Jaiva Dharma is last book, last book, final book. He has written everything clearly. How a Siddha Deh can be given to anyone? And who is Qualified, qualified person to take this. First, we, in Bhajan Rahasyam, he has tell, written so many things very deeply. Those who want to enter in Bhakti realm, they should try to follow this Bhajan Rahasyam and Jaiva Dharma. His all books are like this. First, we should try to Sarva first is slow. Cheto dana param arjanam bhav maha dabhagni nirvapanam. Then we should follow and practice second is slow. Nam nam kari bahu dhani sarvasha. Then third, what? Srinathapi suni chena tarurapi sahisuna. Be like this. And if it is practiced, then come in fourth is slow. Nam dhanam na janam. You should be detached from worldly desires and worldly tastes. Then when you will be pure, always chanting and remembering without any disturbance, then fifth will come. Ayinanda Tanujika. This is Siddha Dev. In the beginning. Who am I? I am eternal serpent of Krishna. In what time? Everything in is our Atma, but like everything, potency is there in seed, so all the potency of that Bhakti and everything is that in our Atma. But without water, air, light, a seed is not sprouted, and leaves and Branches so many, and flowers, manjaris, and after that fruit also comes. It is all in that seed of that creeper. But when it will be touched by the air, water, sunlight, 
and all these things, then he will be disrupted. Otherwise, not. So when this fifth slok, Jiva Saru, and after that, Nenam Galadashu Dharaya, Badanam Gadagadarudhaya Adira, Ulukarneti Tangbapuhokata, Tamanama Grahani Bhavishati. When anyone, anyone will realize these things in his Atma, and he will see that I am eternal servant of Krishna. No worldly attachment at that time. That time, mercifully, the Sarva Shakti will manifest Ladini and Sambhir in the heart of that devotee. Then he will begin to be he will rolling down on the earth at the, taking the name of Krishna. Like Agatamani Yashoda He Nanda Suno, where you are. Sometimes he will see in a glance and at once he will run towards Krishna and Krishna will go out of sight and he will be rolling down, feeling separation. If anyone not feeling separation for Krishna, Siddha Devi has come. So at that time, Siddha Devi will come, not before this. If anyone doing this thing, artificially, they will go to hell. Like Babaji, left and left, Babaji in Vrindavan, Radha Kunda, they are only giving birth of children and doing nonsense things. We know one of the brother of Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Goswami Thakur, the son of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Kedarna Bhakti Vinod, not of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He used to know that that physical body was Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, and we are son of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. But Srila Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti Siddhan Thakur never told like this. He told like the associates of Krishna, Radha and Chaitanya. Not as a father, that he was uh, blood and flesh and all these things. But all his sons were like this, that we are the children of our people on top. So, really, Sri Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur followed the power of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And what he told, he totally admitted and he followed that. So, when the Bhakti Vinod Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur is disciple or anything of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So, our goal is Siddha Dev. But what is Siddha Pranali? Who started it? From where it came? In what year it came? From whom came? From whom came this? Srila hmm? Sanatan Goswami and Rupa Goswami. They are Sanatan Goswami, Rupa Goswami, no Um Baba Ji. Anyone can not tell them that Rup Baba Ji and Sanatan Baba Ji. Srila Raghunath Baba Ji. And who get this Siddha Pranali to him? What is Siddha Pranali? Siddha Pranali is Sid Shastak. From beginning. Those who first they should know that I am eternal subject of Krishna. Of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Nityananda. And following Trinadapi Sunej and becoming detached from worldly attractions and chanting and remembering always 24 hours in the guidance of any very qualified Vaishnava. Tannama Rupa Charitadi Sukratanam Kravena Rasanam Anishini Yodja. Sitan Prajeta Dhanuragi Jananugami Kalam Naeda Kilami This is Siddha Pranali. 
रघुनाथ दास गोस्वामी आए सोल सिद्ध प्रणाली इन मन शिक्षा ऑल आर दिस प्रणाली एंड विदाउट एक्सेप्टिंग ऑल दिस थिंग्स ओ यू आर गोपी यू आर ललिता गोपी यू आर विशाखा गोपी फ्रॉम वेरी इट कैन हु फर्स्ट गेट दिस देर इज नो हिस्ट्री इट इज नॉट अवर कल्चर इट इज नॉट दि टीचिंग ऑफ चैतन्य महाप्रभु रियली सिद्ध दे कम्स फ्रॉम दिस This is Siddha Pranali. Coming from Shraddha to Nishtha, Shraddha, then Guru Karan, Guru Bhajan, Guru Seva, and after that, Bhajan Pranali, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Shmaranam, Padra, Shivanam, Archanam, Bandhanam, Dasya, Khyatmani, Vedanam, or Sadhu Sangh, Nam, Kirtan, Bhagavad, Shravan, Mathura, Vashri, Pratti, Shraddha, Shivan, Processes. We'll have to come in these processes. Then, Krishna will mercifully, Srimati Radhika will mercifully give this Siddha Devi. As in Srimad Bhagavat, it is stated, Narad took mantra from Sanatshanandan Sanatana. And he left his mother dying. He was dying, and yet he left her mother and went to Dense forest. He took his their bath and he sat down very silently and he began to chant that mantra. We don't know how many years he practiced, and after that, Krishna came at once in his heart and at once vanished away. He was weeping so much. So much weeping. Then a Akashmani voice from the sky came and he heard that Narad, I will not give you darshan again in this material body. You should go on chanting, remembering in this whole world, always chanting and remembering. And glorifying my past times. At the nick of time, death will come and you will put your legs, feet on the head of death and you will be liberated. Now begin to do this, always chanting, remembering, doing all his Veena Jantra. Radhika Ramana. Narada Bajaya Veena, Radhika Ramana Nami. Like this, Jasomati Nandana Prajapara Nava, Gokula Ranjana Kana, Gopi Paranathana, Madana Manohara, Kaliya Damana Nita. Like this, all this. Like the past times of Krishna in his own poetry, his own song. After so many years, they came. At once, Siddha Dev came. And that Siddha Dev. He don't, did, did not uh, use the Biman or anything. No airplane, nothing like Dhruva. He was so much uh, strong to go anywhere in this world by his body. That was transcendental body. This is Siddhade. And this is not the process that anyone coming to Gurudev, give me some Dakshina. At least uh, five rupees, <laughs> and you will be. Um, uh, I will be the um, guru there of so many sishya now. And this temptation, uh, 
they make so many disciples, like the Babaji, giving Siddhari, and go to hell with their disciples and Guru both. So we should try to know all the processes that Bhakti Gnana Thakur is told. There will be Shamana Dasha, Parana Dasha. There will be Smarana Dasha, Apana Dasha, Bhavapana Dasha. And then Sampati eh? Dasha. In Sampati Dasha, this Siddha Deva will come. First, Shamana Dasha. You will have to. Here, by any bona fide guru, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Chaitamrita, all the philosophy of Rupa Goswami. Everything. And after Varana Dasha, in Samana Dasha, so there are so many things. So many things. After that, it will come Varana Dasha. We will have to practice. In Samandasa, there are so many things. Who are you? What is your name of this, not this body, of that body, transcendental body? Guru knows. And if Guru not knows, and by Kalpana he tells, tells that. Kalpana? Immunization. Then it is false. So Guru knows all these things. Who are you? What is your name? What is relation with Krishna? What is relation with Srimati Radhika and Gopis? Where you live? What is your name of father, mother? What is your service? How is your beautiful roof? Roof means form. And what is where you live? That is Radha Kunda, Javas, Nandana. Or Varsana, you are daughter of Vishabhanu or anything. And after that, what is Agya? Agya means what is the service of Radha and Krishna, conjugal? And Palyadashi Bhav, and so many things, eleven. You will have to hear and then practice. So in Samandasai, from beginning of Jaiva Dharma, and Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Chaitamit, all the books of Rupa Swami will have to hear and to know all these things. Then it will be Samana Dasha. Not that you went to your Guru, the Guru they told that I am very beautiful Gopi and your name is Yadavita. At once. And this is Siddha Pranayama. We don't know who began this Siddha Pranayama. At the time of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, Vishwanath Thakur Babaji. Anyone can tell him, Babaji? Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. So at that time, the world knows this process to give anyone to um, this focus, Gopi Bhav. Hmm. Not that. We should come in the real process. This was the main object of Siddhartha Thakur. Bhakti Vinod Thakur has one two lines. His teachings are in only two lines. Jeeva Daya, Krishna Naam, Sarva Dharmasha. Jeeva Daya, Krishna Naam, Sarva Dharmasha. What is this? Essence of all the teachings of Ved, Vedanta, Upanishad, Bhagavat, Gita, Puran, Shruti, Smriti, Pancharatra, everything is essence to things. Jive Daya, Krishna. What is the meaning of Jive Daya? Jive Daya, mercy to two conditions. What is that? Bhakti Vinod Thakri has told. What is Jive Daya? If you are successful, in helping any conditioned soul to turn his mood, <coughs> worldly modes, to turn towards Krishna service. This is best 
Daya or mercy to any condition. It is more than lakhs and lakhs hospital doing, in her setting doing, lakhs and lakhs dollars of charities. It is more special thing. Only a realized soul can give this. So this is Eve Daya. How Eve can attend? Only by name. Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Nam Aiva, Only Nam. Name is himself Krishna. But we can make it pure in the association, association of very bona fide Vaishnava. One of five group. Otherwise, we cannot take pure name and pure Shuddha Bhakti. Shuddha Bhakti, what is Shuddha Bhakti? Raganga Bhakti is Shuddha Bhakti. We think that this Vaidhi Bhakti is Shuddha Bhakti, not Shuddha Bhakti. Never. A spontaneous love to Krishna. This is Raganga Bhakti. We are practicing this. Then. And when it will be practiced, then it is a ragatmic frame. When we have no ragatmic frame and we are cultivating by our whole senses for that bhakti, then it is ragatmula. And when we accept the same thing which Rupa Goswami possesses in his what is that? Palladashi of Srimati Radhika. We conditioned soul have only right to go in this, not to being Lalita Vishakha. We cannot accept all these things. It is beyond the limit of conditioned soul. We can follow only Rupa Swami and Rupa Rati, <coughs> Lavanga Manjari and all Manjari. For Sanjee Baba, they told that, oh, you are Lalita, I am Lalita. This is like a Maya, Maya Baba, that is monism. Don't try to go. Don't try to go in this thing. Artificially. Don't do nothing. Imitation. Don't do imitation. Come in the process of Siddha Bhakti Gnum Thakur, and that process is elaborately told by Siddha Bhakti Siddham Saraswati Gurushami Thakur. Siddha Bhakti Vinod Thakur foretells, foretells, for that near future, in near future, so many hundred thousands of Western devotees are coming with Sikha and Tulsi Mala and they will meet with Indian devotees and they will do Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. And then our whole world, it will spread this mission of, pure mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, started by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So he is the root of all preaching, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So we are indebted to Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, really. Today is the aspirations there. There are so many things to be told. I may tell, I tell it. No briefly, any another day. But I think that uh, what was useful for you, they have told everything about what we know. Also, today is your special day for Siddhartha. Yeah. 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 Prabhu is himself not only associate of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is himself Harsal Prasrimati Radhi. Krishna take beauty, golden beauty, and mood of Srimati Radhika. And he came in a form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gauchandra. Actually, he is Krishna. Only to satisfy his three modes, Radhaya, Pranay, Mahima, And to sprinkle the mercy, to give that frame to all jivas here. Because he is so merciful and he is so rashik. Rashik Shekhar Krishna Paramakarun Eidu Hetu Dinadhu. 
He was merciful. And that is why he is giving Krishna Prem to Jiva. But what kind of Krishna Prem? Prem Sri, the beauty of Bhakti. What is that beauty of Unnata Ujjwala Rasang Swabhakti? That is the boat of Rupushan. Tambulat Pranapada Mardan Payodana, he likes this, all these things. He is giving. Hmm? We are only um, qualified to go in this. Not Lalita, Vishakha, Chitra, Chandravali, and all. We are not like that. So, if Krishna took the mood and beauty of Radhika, then Radhika was like zero. Was she? No. He was only practicing how Srimati Radhika was in meeting and in separation in both ways. How he was happy in serving Krishna and how he was feeling so much separation more when Krishna used to go to Mathura or Dvarka or in cow herding or if Srimati Radhika has mon. Sometimes Krishna used to have mon also. So here in this past times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gadadhar Prabhu was looking after always very carefully that Krishna is playing my role actually or not. Where is defect? So always looking after. And if there was any loop and hole, there were some loopholes sometimes in Krishna also. So he used to review Krishna and to teach that this mood is mine. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Krem form, uh, Gaya, and now he was playing role, O oh, Krishna of everyone. This is the mood of Srimati Rāna. Aidīna Dayādra, Nāthe, Maturāna, Pradāva, Lokkashe, Hridayam, Tada Ālok, Kātaram, Like, also there is one shlok, which um, Mahatma Puri used to recite. Hey Krishna, hey Chapala, hey Karunai Kasindhu. What is your? Uh, hey Krishna, hey Chapala, hey Karunai Kasindhu. Uh, but what is the first line? Uh, or in Srimad Bhagavatam. Like, hey Nath. हे रमन, हे प्रिस्ट, क्वाशी क्वाशी महाभूजा, की बनाया दर्शनस्ते सके दर्शनेश्वर। So बदातर पंडित was associates of चैतन्य महाप्रु in boyhood. He used to play in the lands of नवद्वीप with चैतन्य महाप्रु when they were naked. When they are reading in schools, part sala, he was also associated of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When he came from Gaya, he was associated. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took renounce order and gave up his worldly life, he was also associated with him. And he went to Jagannath Puri with him. And he promised that I will never give up this holy land of Jagannath Puri. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going to Vrindavan. Now he was ready to give up this promise. Chaitra Sanyas, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, take care of him. Oath of his own head, don't go. You should be here. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted that I should go alone Vrindavan. Otherwise, if Gadadhar will go, then all will know that I am Krishna. So he was fearing so much. So anyhow he stopped Gadadhar Pandit. Gadadhar Pandit was coming with him up to any village of Odisha. 
and there was a very big river. Then Mahaprabhu told that you should come with me from here. He should stop you. I am giving you my both of my gates. Then he began, I at once became pen and Mahaprabhu at once. As a niche tool, cruel hearted. He went along with two Brahmins, unknown Brahmins, and he went to Vrindavan. When he came, he used to be with Gadada Pandit in Gopinath temple. <coughs> Gopinath? Sota Gopinath. Sota Gopinath. Once he was hearing Srimad Bhagavatam from Gadadhar Pandit. At once Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stood up and told Gadadhar, I want to give you a very wide, near and dear thing to you. I want to take. He told that, uh, take some sands from here. And a little sand was taken from there and at Gopinath. Very beautiful deity came from sand and he gave it to me. He told that this is my heart, you should always worship this deity. He began to worship. Once Nityananda Prabhu came, having some cloths and beautiful rice and something else, and he gave to Gadada that if you should uh, make preparation of rice, shark and all other things. But the Pandit was so expert in cooking because she was Radhika. And everything cooked by her was like more than nectar. Very quickly he did the rice that he turned on the food. And he gave that bastra to cloth to Gopinath. And he took some Tetul Patta, tamarind leaves. leaves, and cooked a very good rasala from that. He took some uh, forest uh, shark, grilled leaves, and when it so beautiful, and when he offered Anitya Prabhu was to take prasad, at once Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and told, Oh, you are cheating me? Why you not uh, in, in, invited me? And you are going to take only alone Nityananda and Galadhar both? I will also take Mahaprabhu. Then he also sat there and Nityananda Prabhu and Mahaprabhu took Prasad and they were very satisfied there. After some time, one day he was hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. What? Krishna disappeared from from Rashvila. And they were singing and weaving with tears. Tavakatamritam Tattajivanam Kavviritam Kalmashapam Shabadamangalam Srimadatatam Mahaprabhu began a hard part like Brother Prabhu recited in such a separation mood that Mahaprabhu was meditated. He began to pay. He runs at once towards the temple and went to Jagannath and mixed in Jagannath. Gopinath. 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 But that Prabhu was waiting that when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will return, but he never returned, never returned. And he became fainted and rolling down on the earth. Oh Mahaprabhu, where you have left us? In pain, in the mature stage of pain, a Mahabhirahatni comes, like Koti Koti Pradayagni, means, what I told Separation. In matured stage of pain, a Mahabhirahatni, like 
more than koti koti pralayagini. Destruction. Millions of times more than that. Whole world burning in that. Hmm? Coming from the third eyes of Sankar. All are burning. So lakhs and lakhs and more than that. Very painful. A stage comes. Go feel like this in the separation. One month separation, and one moment separation. So painful for this. A arti comes. Arti comes. Arti means pain for destruction. Oh Krishna, where you are? Where you are? Like this. This makes a very anarvachaniya sampatti. Anarvachaniya sampatti means? Indescribable wealth. Wealth. And in this stage, this wealth, what wealth? That I am telling. It dance over all kinds of happiness on the heads of all Ananda. And that is called Vipralambharas. Though it is seen very painful from outside, more than close and close heat of Pralayagni. Pralayagni means destruction fire. But if a Anarvachani Ananda comes, By seeing this, Krishna melts. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was melted with the, this Pirahagni of Srila Pradhan Pandit. We cannot define this when we will be in Braja and when we will feel separation, then we can know something. But we cannot describe to anyone. But it is the highest thing. And if there is nothing, then we cannot taste meeting of Krishna. So, Krishna is melted to see the devotee stage of separation mood. In our Sadhan stage, we will have to feel some separation. If you are not feeling separation for Krishna, how we can do anything for Krishna? We cannot do any sadhana. But if feeling separation, that is something that should. And then more and more, and when we will come to Mark Sadhana, how the mood, how the sadhana, then this something abhas of that Dirhagni will be manifest here. And then Sri Krishna will come. In this stage. So, the ordinary person, they cannot know what is that separation mood. Say they laugh sometimes. When Sri Pandit was rolling down on the earth and waiting because hearing this sloka, Paraha, Pidam, Nataparabhatu, and all the Pandits of Navdip were laughing and joking, and they took his body and they but they throw him out of that school. They don't know Bhagavad even. So they laugh and joke. So Chaitanya, um, so Srimad Bhagavad is telling Mukti Tadati Nakshma Bhakti Yoga. Mukti Tadami Karadi. Krishna can liberation and can give liberation and all these things, worldly things he can give easily. Mukti are also very easily. But these friends Krishna does not give to them. Why? Because they don't know, realize this separation mode. They laugh and joke to devotees. That is why they Krishna. He gets to Raya Mandi. Where? Where? So Bhakti Vinan Thakur was one of them 
and he was the incarnation or manifestation of Sila Gadadha Pandit, Gaur Shakti and Gaur Shakti is Gadadha himself, he is Sivati Radhika himself. So if you will take shelter in the Lord's feet of Gadadha Pandit and to Srimati Bhakti Vinod Thakur, then we will come in process and very quickly they will enter in Bhakti Vinod Shuddha Bhakti Ko Pranam Priyo Jasamati Nandana
Makrinod's youth, he wrote a number of different articles and books like in the form of English poetry. So he's asking how Guri Vaishnavas regard these sort of articles and books of the Makrinod Thakur. Why he wrote? I, I can only guess. <laughs> but um, Srila Bhakti Nath Thakur, uh, though he was an eternal associate of the Lord in his youth, uh, he appeared as if he was he was not exhibiting his uh, characteristic as a Vaishnava. He was, uh, of course, very religious-minded, very philosophical.